Okay, section 4.1, polynomial functions. A polynomial looks like that. Okay. A sub n, x to the n. A sub n minus 1, x to the n minus 1. A sub n minus 2, x to the n minus 2. And so on and so forth until you get to the end. A sub 2, x to the second power. A sub 1, x to the first power, but we don't write the first power. And a sub 0, which technically has an x to the 0 power as well, because anything to the 0 power is 1, except for 0. 0 to the 0 power is undefined. Okay. Subscripts have nothing to do with value. Subscripts have nothing to do with value. Subscripts are strictly a way of allowing us to use the same variable repeatedly, or I should say the same variable, or the same constant repeatedly, and doesn't make the difference between them. A sub 1 and A sub 2 just means that A sub 1 is the constant, the coefficient that goes with the x, a sub 2, is the one that goes with x squared. It has nothing to do with the value of those two constants. Okay, those two coefficients have nothing to do with it. We start with x sub n because that is the largest one we have. Whatever our degree of our polynomial is, that is our largest one. Okay, exponents are natural numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, no fractions, no decimal exponents. Those come at another time. Okay, and no variables underneath the radical. So no square roots, no nothing like that. The nice thing about polynomials is your variables are all just to a single positive integer power. x to the first, x squared, x cubed. And you can skip some. A polynomial, x to the 100th, is a polynomial. It only has one term, that first term, and in theory, all the rest of them do follow, but they all have a zero for a coefficient. So it doesn't matter what your x's are, because you have zero of those. Okay? Any variable or group of variables where it's raised to a power. So the coefficients... For all the a's, a sub n, because that is the nth term, the minus 1, it's the first coefficient, a sub n. n minus 1 is the 1 after that, 1 less than that on the subscript. n minus 2, so if I start out with 100 terms, a sub 100 is the first coefficient, a sub 99 is the second coefficient, and so on and so on and so on. Okay, once again, those are just ways of letting us use the same variable or constant more than once. A sub 0 is the constant in our, in our polynomial. So if we have x plus 1, our constant is 1, that plus 1. x squared minus 2x plus 3, the 3 is a sub 0. That's our constant on its own. And the degree is the highest power. The nth power is our degree. Now, we can get an awful lot from our degree, our highest power. Okay. Our highest power tells us how many possible zeros we have. It actually tells us technically how many zeros we have. If we have x to the 100th, we have 100 zeros. We have 100 roots. We have 100 solutions to that polynomial. If it's to the 100th degree, we have 100 solutions. That solution may appear more than once. That is what multiplicity is. Multiplicity tells us it appears more than once. So if you have a polynomial where it factors out and you get x 
minus one times x minus one, and your zeros are one and one, okay, you have a zero of one with a multiplicity of two. Because that factor, that root, appears twice. So if I have x to the 100th power, and that's the only polynomial I have, that's the only part is I have x to the 100th, set it equal to zero and solve, I get x equals zero. With a multiplicity of 100, <coughs> I have 100 zeros, and those zeros are all zero. It's all the same one. That can happen. Okay, that can happen. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Number of local extrema. Extrema, maximum and minimum, plural of extreme. Extrema. So maximums and minimums are extremes. Number of extrema is the number of maximums and minimums we have. If the degree is n, then the maximum number is one less than that power. The maximum number of extremas are one less than that power. We could have fewer. Once again, x to the 100th. The maximum number of extremas we could have would be 99. It could technically, if we have some polynomial where x to the 100th is the largest x that we have in our polynomial, we could have, in theory, 99 maximums and minimums. But if it's x to the 100th all by itself, we have 1. There is only one, but the, we have a possibility of having 99 of them. We don't. But we can. Okay. If you look at the degree, the degree will tell you how many possible maximums and minimums there are. Not how many there are, but what the possibility is. And there's a difference between that. You have to understand the possibilities and what they are are two different things. You know you're not going to have more than that. Okay, the possible number of zeros we have is what our power is. Possible number, the possible number of um, extrema we have, maximum minimums, is one less than the highest power. Possible. Doesn't mean we have them all. Okay, if it doesn't do all the humpy humps in between, we don't have any ex extremas. It can look almost like a straight line. Almost. And then we wouldn't have any maximum limits. It's possible that we don't have any. But we might have some, and the most we could have would be one less than one less power. And behavior. This is a big deal. End behavior, in fact, in calculus, we talk about the end behavior model. Okay, and we will actually take it to an extreme we talk about it using other functions other than just polynomials. But the idea is as the absolute value of x gets really large, the polynomial looks like its highest power. So if I have x to the fifth, 4x to the fourth, negative 8x cubed plus 2x squared minus 9, in the middle, lots of squiggly stuff's going to go on. But when x gets really, really big or really, really small, it's just going to look like x to the fifth. It will look exactly the same as x to the fifth because everything else will become irrelevant. That's what end behavior model is. Okay. Now, that irrelevancy may come fast. It may take a while to happen. But eventually, all the stuff smaller than the largest power will become irrelevant. Okay. All parabolas all look the same once you get past a certain point. When you have x to the fourth, you may have it come down and give you this really cool w shape in the middle. But when you get away from that shape in the middle, when you get to larger values, it just looks like x to the fourth as if nothing else is going on. That's what end behavior models are. And end behavior models can be very useful because we can say, listen, we're talking about numbers so freaking big, 
The rest of it doesn't matter. We'll just look at this part of the equation, this part of the polynomial, and we can ignore everything else while we're doing our work. And that's really kind of nice to be able to say, we can ignore all the squiggly stuff in the middle and just go with what's on the outside. And that's a very powerful tool. You have to remember there's squiggly stuff in the middle, and you will have to figure out what that squiggly stuff in the middle is doing. But it's nice to know what's going on on the outer banks and to be able to get there. You don't have to do anything with the squiggly stuff. You can just look at the height of power and go with that. Okay? And that's the end behavior. And in calculus, you actually do end behavior models where you take an equation in your end behavior model and it's just what it looks like on the outskirts. Okay? And when you start getting away from polynomials, it can look different depending upon whether you're going really small or really large, depending upon what your equation is. Okay, depending upon what your equation is. Because at some point, some things become irrelevant. What it is, is the rest of it becomes irrelevant. When you put in very, very small values, you know, negative 10 billion, some of it becomes irrelevant. When you put in positive 10 billion, some of it becomes irrelevant. So you only have to worry about the stuff at the end and what it looks like. Okay? So far. Okay, so looking at the graph and interpreting what's going on. So I have two graphs. We'll start with graph I. I. Degree, is it even or odd? I have no idea what my degree of my polynomial is. What I can, by looking at the graph, I can tell if it's even or odd. Do both ends go in the same direction? No. So what do parabolas look like? Are parabolas even or odd? Even. Okay, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, everything like this or like this. What does x cubed look like? Got that disco thing, that John Travolta thing going on, right? Okay. So those are odd, because John Travolta has become very odd. <laughs> okay. So, in that first function, is that even or odd? It's odd. I don't know what the power is, but I do know it's odd. I have no idea what the degree is, but I do know that I have an odd function. Okay. When it comes up one way and goes out the other way, it's a polynomial. If it's a polynomial, I know that that's an odd degree. Okay. <laughs> Now, what is the smallest possible degree? No, no, smallest possible degree. So the highest power in your polynomial, what's the smallest that value could be? And if we go back to our, oh, sorry, it's going to go away. And that one's going to go away too. Maximum number of maximums and minimums. It has to be one more than what we have for that. So how many maximums and minimums do we have there? We have four. One, two, three, four maximums, minimums. Two maximums, two minimums. So our degree has to be one more than that at the minimum. Because the maximum number of max and mins are one less than the degree. So if I have a degree five, the most I could have would be four. Now, it is possible to have much fewer, so it could be higher than that, but that's the smallest it has to be. If I have four maxes and mins, I have to have at least a degree five, because it has to be at least one more than the maximums and minimums I have, at least one more than that. It could be a lot more, but it has to be at least one more than that. So my smallest possible degree is five. Is my leading coefficient positive or negative? Now, with with, with the with the ones that are even, it's it's you know they're up, it's positive, but they're both down, they're negative. Where it's odd, you have to think a little bit harder about it. But what does an x cube look like? Remember, you got that John Travolta thing. It comes up from the negative and goes up positive. So this one would be positive. My leading coefficient has to be positive. So it's something positive x to an odd power of 5 or larger. Okay. So my leading coefficient is positive. Okay, the number of zeros I have. 
I should say the number of real zeros I have. Because there's a difference between the number of zeros and the number of real zeros. The number of real zeros I have is how many times does it cross and or touch the x-axis? Because everywhere it crosses or touches, I have a zero. How many do I have? I've got two. And my real zeros are negative three and one. I have two zeros, and what are they? They're negative three and one. Now, the multiplicity of zeros. This is an interesting one. Whether it crosses or whether it touches determines your multiplicity. If it crosses, it has a multiplicity that is odd. So I have, I have, if I were to do my polynomial, if I were to do the first one, I have two factors. I have negative 3 as a 0, so that means I have x plus 3 as a factor, right? And I have x plus 1 as a factor. Now, these are not my own, possibly, probably, not my only factors. But these are the only ones that are going to be real, have real roots. Okay, there may be other, there's other crap going on there, I guarantee you. Okay. The power on these is what the multiplicity is. If it touches, I have an even power. If it crosses, I have to have an odd power. So my multiplicity for the negative 3 is odd because it passes through. If it passes through, it has to be an odd power. If it crosses, it has to, if it touches and only touches, it has to be an even power. Okay. So my guess is this would be the first power and this would be the second power because I've got some other crap going on there that would involve a high. So when it That'd be my that, guess. I don't know for sure. So when it asks for the multiplicity of zeros, do you just want even and odd? Or yeah, even or odd. So you you will be able to, if you're given the power, you can figure it out. But if you're not given the power, you don't know. Okay, you just know whether they're odd or even. Okay. Take a minute and answer the same questions for the second graph. Yeah. Okay, so, so leading coefficient positive and negative. What you have to do is, what does the standard function look like? So if I have a parabola x squared, and it opens up when my x squared is positive, right? It opens down when my x squared is negative. So that means the number in front of the x squared is negative. The number in front of the x squared is positive. So my leading coefficient determines, does my graph open up? Does my graph open down if it's even? If it's odd, does it go like this? Or does it go like this? If it's if it's positive, then my graph looks something like this. If I have an odd polynomial, if my leading coefficient would be negative if I have an odd degree. So this one, it starts down here and eventually ends up out here. I don't care about the squiggly crap in the middle, just where does it start then? It starts down here and ends up here. If it's an odd function that looks like this on the ends, like I said, squiggly stuff in the middle. Okay. In the ends. Does it come up and then go off positive? It does then my leading coefficient, the number in front of the x, is positive. If it does this kind of thing, does the reverse sum come over? Going on. If it goes like this, if it comes down from positive to go to negative, then the leading coefficient is zero. If it opens down, it will be negative, it opens up, it's not here. Okay, that shouldn't hopefully take too long. So the first one is the, is the degree odd or even? Even. The both ends go in the same direction. If it starts and stops pointing in the same direction, it's even. What's the smallest possible degree? Four. Because I have three extrema, two local max, one local min. I have three of those. My degree has to be at least one more. Could it be more than four? Yeah, it could be any even number four or larger. That's okay, but my minimum, come on, show up, where are you? There we go. And it's negative because both ends are pointing down. 
So my leading coefficient has to be negative. How many zeros do I have and what are they? I have three and they're negative one, one, and four. And the multiplicities? Odd, even, odd. Yeah, there's only one even one. It's the one in the middle. So I know that I have factors of x plus 1, x minus 1 squared, and x minus 4. I might have some other stuff going on. I probably have, I know I have a coefficient out in front that's negative, negative some number out in front. This is not complete. But I have to have at least this. It is possible that this is a higher, higher power that's, that's even. It's possible but both of these could have higher powers that are odd. I don't know. But it is possible. But I have at least that, possibly more. I do not have enough information to know for sure what's going on. But I know I have that and possibly some other stuff. And I do know I have other stuff to make a point down. I just don't know what all that other stuff is, but at least I've got an idea. I know something that's going on here. Okay. Questions so far? Okay, so let's take a look at this next one here. So I'm given a polynomial, although that's not really a polynomial by, its stand, by itself, is it? But if I FOIL it out and multiply everything together, I do have my polynomial. This is my polynomial in factored form, which if you can get into factored form, ooh, it makes it sweet. Makes it much easier to work with in factored form sometimes. Okay, but I know where all my zeros are and all that stuff. So first one, list the real zeros with their multiplicity. So I have... My real zeros with multiplicity, so I have a zero at negative four with a multiplicity of one. And I have a zero at negative three with a multiplicity of three. So the second question is important for when you're doing your graph. Yes? Is there an easier way to write it than just arrows? Yeah, you can write multiplicity of one. I'm just being short. Can you, you like put it to a power? No, you want to, no, 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 because you don't, you want to put the multiplicity. You can do, I don't want to do the power on that. I don't want to list it on the power. You want to make sure to separate that because the implication would be, ooh, my solution is negative three cubed. It's not. And I have negative three that it happens three times. Now, the next one, determine if the graph crosses or touches. This is all to do with multiplicity. If it's multiplicity, it does what? If the multiplicity is odd, excuse me, it does what? Crosses. crosses. The multiplicity is even, it <laughs> touches. So with both of those, it crosses. So this one crosses both. What are the maximum number of extrema slash turning points? What's the most number? What's the, what's the maximum number of turning points? So what is my degree? How many zeros do I, what is the multiplicity of my zeros add up to? My degree is four. My degree is four. If you were to FOIL x plus 3 out, x plus 3 cubed and FOIL it out, you would have x cubed as your first coefficient. Then you would multiply that times x plus 4, which would give you x to the fourth, sorry, it's your first term. x to the fourth is your first term. So you have 4, which means you have 3, you have three extrema, or a maximum of 3 extrema. It is possible to have less, depending upon what's going on, but you have at least three, or a maximum of three. Okay. So for this one, you have three. And the last one, sketch it. Well, where are my zeros? My zeros are at negative four, and at three. And it has a power of four, so it comes down. 
and it goes back up. Well, I know it's going to come down and it has to come back up somewhere, so it's going to do something like that. And for what we know right now, that's the best we can do. We cannot, with our current knowledge, you cannot, with your current knowledge, do better than this. I know. Well, it's one of those things. It's one of those things is that I really have fresh in my mind what's coming next or what's coming up next year. And you will be able to find exactly where the maximums and minimums are algebraically. Hmm? Yeah. Well, you're never going to get it perfect. But you're going to get the important points. Okay. So, um, so for, for example, and this is funny. I'm going to go ahead and stop here.